What's up, guys? My name is Brendan, and the trick of the week this week is the triple cork. Today, I'm going to go over a ton of triple cork examples. After that, I'm going to talk about the most important prerequisites before learning this trick. Then, I'm going to go over the triple cork technique and do an analysis of a ton of triple cork fails. Finally, I'm gonna go over mastering the triple cork and give you my final thoughts on this trick. But with that said, let's get started. I wanna start by showing three examples of good triple corks. The world's first triple cork, the strongest triple cork I've ever seen, and the best triple cork I've ever performed. All of these are great examples of the triple cork, and all of them come from a different setup. example is Scott Skelton with the world's first triple cork, and he uses such a weird setup. He does a scoot, swing, touchdown, gainer switch into his triple cork. It is such a weird setup, I can barely swing anything from that setup, let alone a triple cork. And when he does the triple cork, he doesn't get crazy height, he just twists crazy fast. You can see his arms are super close to his body and he is like squeezing all along that axis as he spins around. He even lands with his legs like crossed, almost squatting into the ground. This was a huge accomplishment and changed tricking forever. But soon after, everyone was throwing triple court. But we cannot forget that Scott Skelton was the first and he revolutionized this sport by changing it and leveling up his tricks. Our second example is the strongest triple cork I have ever seen. And this is from Mike Guthrie, of course. This is from Trick Different 2. This was the first time I really got to know Mike. We ran into each other, I think, for the first time at Neo 2. But this was the first time we really sat down and like had a conversation. At the end of like a two hour session, I went up to him and was like, hey, Mike, I need some study footage. Would you mind doing a triple cork? And he does a touchdown rise, triple cork, swing, gainer. It just blew my freaking mind. I cannot believe he had the endurance to do that after such a long session and to swing the gainer with his head just brushing the ground. I thought it was absolutely insane. But we can learn a lot from his technique. Mike has mastered blocking and locking in. He converts all that momentum from his touchdown rise, that horizontal momentum from running up into vertical momentum by blocking it forward as he performs the swing. And right after he blocks, to get that flipping momentum and to get his vertical momentum, he also locks in his twist. Once he gets into that twisting position, he does not move until he moves into his eagle after performing the three twists. His ability to lock in is one of the things that makes his triple cork so consistent. Not only that, he has really mastered blocking and that setup, the touchdown rise. Coming out of this triple cork, he even was able to get into an eagle and swing into a gainer, which is just absolutely ridiculous. That's why this is such a good example of a triple cork. Our third example is the best triple cork I have ever performed. This was at Experience Tricking 2019. Earlier this year, I threw the triple cork and it felt absolutely amazing. The vibe at the session was absolutely perfect. 
I won't be able to make it to Experience Trick in 2020, but I will leave a link in the description down below. It is an amazing gathering, and I think everybody should visit if they get the opportunity. Now, when it comes to that triple cork, I used a palm kick into a master scoop. I really like that setup, but it's hard for me to get a good block unless the spring floor is really grippy. Thankfully, this gym, the spring floor is like perfect for me. So I was able to get a ton of power, and when I threw the triple cork, I was able to do it super clean. You see, triple cork is not very consistent with me, but when I threw this one, it was super strong and super clean. I was able to have a super tight twist and point my toes and lock into that twisting position. But unfortunately, triple cork is not a very consistent skill with me. So when I do do it well, I'm really happy, but honestly, I still need to keep working on it. Because even though I have this clip, it's not something I can do every day. That's why I need to keep training. But honestly, this is the best triple cork I have ever done. Next, I want to talk about the most important prerequisite when it comes to learning the triple cork. And there are a ton of prerequisites when it comes to this trick. You need a good setup that is strong, consistent, and controlled. But you also need a good cork, a good double cork, and all the hypers in between. You should also probably have a really strong cheat gainer, so that way you can get a ton of flip when performing this trick. But all of those are super important. The thing I think that's most important is you get good at falling. The triple cork is a hard trick to do. Chances are you're not going to land every attempt. So instead of getting injured every time you fall, I recommend every athlete invest a significant amount of time into getting good at falling. This could mean getting mats beneath you and just bailing every time understanding what a good set is and what a bad set is. Do you have enough twist to get around? And practice opening up before you hit the ground so that way you're ready to catch yourself if something goes wrong. You see, the triple cork takes a lot of power and with great power comes great responsibility. If you get injured with every triple cork, it's gonna suck. So invest time into getting good at falling. And before you even attempt triple cork, use falling as an important prerequisite. Make sure you can fall onto a mat when doing the triple cork and then attempt it on the ground. Invest a ton of time. Do that drill into the mat until you recognize exactly where you are in space. That is super important for preventing injury, so that way you can have a long, stable progression. But once you get good at falling, I think you're able to commit to the triple cork far better. A lot of the times, people will have a fear of injury when it comes to committing to a skill. And if you can get rid of that fear by getting good at falling, you will be far more committal and you will have a far better triple cork. That's why learning how to fall, I think, is one of the most important prerequisites along with all the other ones I mentioned earlier. Next, I want to talk about the technique behind the triple cord. And honestly, the technique behind this trick is pretty easy to understand. You just set with a massive cheat gainer and wrap in for three twists. The hard thing about the triple cork is you need to get enough power from your swing to do those three twists and still complete your flip. Usually the triple cork requires a certain mastery over your setup. In the three examples I showed you earlier, each of us did a different setup. Scott Skelton did a scoot, swing, touchdown, gainer switch into his triple cork, and Mike Guthrie uses a touchdown rise. When I do my triple cork, I prefer a palm kick into a master scoot. But 
all of us still are able to do a good, clean, strong triple core. When it comes to the setup you do, the technique performing that is often just as important, if not more important, than the technique behind the triple court itself. Because the technique is, like I said, pretty simple. You take your leg from that swing position in the eagle and you drive it forward with your arms, trying to get enough flip to do one flip in a slightly off axis position. Next, you wrap in that twist, trying to bring your arms super close to your chest and bring your legs together. Often athletes will cross one leg over the other. For me, I twist to my left, so I will cross my left leg over my right. My right leg is my swing leg and my left leg is my landing leg. So my left leg is in front, ready to catch myself should something go wrong. And that is typical of many other athletes. They will cross their legs left over right. Keep in mind, gymnasts and athletes of other disciplines tend not to cross their legs when they twist. They will just simply keep them together. Now, the final part of the triple cork technique is to just land the skill, to open up your arms right before you hit the ground, get your legs beneath you, and to absorb the impact. And often, this is just as hard as setting in the beginning. The triple cork only has three steps to this technique. You do that massive set in the beginning, you twist for three rotations, and then you open up at the end. The triple cork is easy to explain, but it's hard to do. You need mastery over your setup. That way it is strong, consistent, and controlled, and you also need enough strength. You need to be strong to do a triple cork. You need to swing that leg really hard, and it causes a lot of tension when you're pulling in that twist. This trick is not easy. So not only do you have to be strong and have a good setup, but you also need to understand the triple court technique. Thankfully, it's pretty easy. And that is the technique behind the triple court. You swing, you twist for three rotations, and then you open up to land. Though the setup is just as important as the triple itself. Next, I'm going to do some analysis of some bad triple corks. And these are my bad triple corks. You see, the other day I went into a session and I just ate the floor. Again and again and again, I fell on the triple cork. But this isn't a bad thing. You see, every time we fall, if we're lucky enough to film it, we can get a ton of data from watching the footage. What did I do good? What did I do bad? Why did I fall? And did I do something right? I can learn a lot from watching my clip again and again and again, even though I didn't land the trick. You see, when you fail, it's not a bad thing. You can still learn from it. I hate hearing trickers say that they are upset because they can't land a trick. Just study your footage, keep training, and keep working. Eventually, you will land it. You see, I don't land triple cork every time. Half the time I go into a triple cork session, I don't get the trick. But when I do, it is that much more rewarding. Now, let's look at some really bad triple corks. In our first example, I don't have enough flip. When I do my triple cork, I start from a standing position when I do the palm kick into the master scoop, which isn't a bad thing, but I lack a lot of power. The hope is that I generate that power with this long setup, but in this example, I just don't get enough lift. I might not be swinging that leg hard enough. I might need to kick harder in the beginning when I do my palm kick. I might need to push off the ground harder when I do my master scoop. There are a ton of ways to attack the problem of not having enough lift. 
Next time I do it, I'm definitely gonna try and gas up the beginning of the trick. What I mean is when I do that palm kick, I'm gonna throw my body forward and kick my legs hard. And maybe if I kick them a little bit more over my head, I'll have a little bit more inversion when doing the master scoop, which will also give me more power and more flip when I do the triple core. But this was a good example. I was able to learn a lot from it and my body hurts because of it. You see, when you do fall on a trick, it does hurt. And in this example, and in all the examples I'm gonna show you, it hurt. But that's not a bad thing. You just have to invest time in your recovery. And whenever you're sore after a session, whenever you take a ton of falls, but you don't get injured, you get stronger for it. You see, the thing is, I know exactly why I fell. I fell because I rushed my twist. You see, in the beginning, when I did my swing for the triple cork, not the palm kick, not the master scoop, but the actual swing for the triple cork itself. When I did that swing, I had my chest completely up and I had started to pull in my twist. When you do your triple cork, you need to have a hollow body to arch body swing as you enter the trick. If you don't do a good swing in the beginning and you rush the twist like I did, you don't get the flip you need. And that's why I fell. I just didn't get enough flip because I rushed my twist in the beginning. Next time I do my triple cork, I need to be far more patient. I struggle with being patient when it comes to ripping that twist. It's easier for me with something like cart triple full. But when it comes to palm kick, master scoop, triple cork, I really struggle to be patient and ride that swing before I wrap in that twist. As you saw, when I did the twist, it was super tight and super fast but I need to complete my swing if I want enough flip. That said, this was a really close attempt and I should be proud. Honestly, I think if I can get a little bit more power in the beginning and I can be a little bit more patient in that swing, I should be able to have way more power when I do my triple cork and that should give me enough flip to land back on my feet. But with each attempt comes a new lesson. Example number three shows one of my fatal flaws. You see, I am really good at falling. It's a point of pride with me that I can eat it over and over and over again and not get injured. I can fall from some pretty weird positions and catch my body most of the time. And when it comes to triple cork, it's something I've gotten really good at. It's an essential thing, like I talked about earlier, when I went over the prerequisites. But unfortunately, I've gotten so good at falling that I'll often fall instead of landing the trick, even if I do a good set. Even if it's a good swing and the twist is really strong, like in this example, I will still open up and catch myself with my arms instead of just landing the trick. And that is a super negative thing. That is something that I need to really work on. Even though I'm good at falling, I need that extra level of commitment to do the landing, to not move my arms to catch me, but to keep them up and stick my feet beneath me. You see, I like to train with a lot of caution because my body is, in a lot of ways, my career. I am mastering tricking. If I get injured all the time, I'm not gonna be able to progress in the sport. That's why I train so cautiously and that's why I don't a triple court. I don't do triple court too often. I just don't want to get hurt. And this example is a great example of me just not committing because I don't want to get hurt. But I need to push through that. 
these mental barriers that we get as we train, with each one we break through, we get better at overcoming those mental barriers. And if I can commit to that triple cork and not open up to catch myself and fall on purpose, I will be far better off. You see, when you do open up to catch yourself, that can get you injured in and of itself. So you need to be very cautious and often committing to a skill puts your body in less risk than opening up to fall on purpose. These things are really hard and really complicated. But when it came to this attempt, I did everything right. I had a really strong palm kick. My master scoot was excellent. When I did my swing, I completed the motion and I locked into my twisting position really fast. And I held it the entire time. But on my final twist, instead of sticking my legs beneath me, I just opened them up slightly and I stuck my arm out to catch my body. It's a really good reflex. I'm glad that I can fall like a cat, but I want to land the trick. Next time I do my triple cork, I'll try and really commit mentally and physically to try and get my legs beneath me and keep my arms up to get the skill nice and strong. But with this attempt, I should be very proud. Everything else besides that final little open up was absolutely perfect. I had a strong palm kick. I did a good master scoop. And it was a good triple cork besides me just opening up. That said, there is a lot to learn with this clip especially. And I should be proud, but I should keep moving. I want to land this trick. Honestly, I am pretty far from mastering the triple cork. It's still a struggle for me. The trick is not very consistent when I compare it to other skills like the B-twist. The B-twist is very consistent, whereas the triple cork, I need a good spring floor. I need my body to feel strong. I need my feet to not be sweaty, so that way I can block on the floor. All these factors really matter when it comes to doing the triple cork, because the skill is so hard and so legendary. That said, it is a cool trick. I'm just on the journey with you. I have not mastered the triple cork. Rather, I am mastering the triple cork. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, share it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever social media you use. And if you liked it, hit that like button. Of course, subscribe. And if you wanna get more involved, check out the links in the description. If you want, you could even become a patron, get instant access to me, along with a ton of other rewards. Guys, if you're looking for something this Christmas season, please check out howtomastertricking.com. Consider picking up a shirt or even buying the mastering curriculum. It would all mean the world to me because it helps support creating content just like this. But thank you again for watching and please have a lovely day.